What is that in the sky? It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. No, it's rain clouds. Something we haven't seen for over two months here in much of the Philippines. And uh, very welcome, I can tell you that. It rained a little bit last night, uh, and it has been cloudy all day with several rain showers coming across, raining for a few hours, letting up, staying staying cloudy. And just now, uh, I took this about, I don't know, 10 o'clock this morning, I think, and it's uh, about 4.30 now as I'm making this video, and we have some more rain showers coming in. Now, another good thing is that it's much cooler. Um, instead of being in the low to mid 90s, it is uh, about 89 in my condo with my windows open and a nice breeze blowing through. Now, I've lived three different trips to the Philippines. Uh, I've, I've lived here a little over eight years and uh, I have seen, this is the third drought I've experienced. 2015 when I first came was a drought and a lot of talk about that. In fact, I met, a, I met an American on the airplane. He'd been to the Philippines a number of times during the quote-unquote dry season, and he wanted to see what the wet season was going to be like, and uh, that was in, in August 2015. And uh, I think to his surprise, the wet, the wet season wasn't the wet season, although even with the drought, two, three, four times a week we would get some rain but it wasn't as much as, as you would normally see in, in the wetter season. And uh, so four years later, 2015, then four years later, 2019, uh, there was a worse drought, and I didn't think it was that bad because there again, several times during the week we would get rain here in Cebu City, and I thought, man, we're getting plenty of rain. This isn't a drought, but it was the amount of rain, the quantity of rain we were getting, uh, that that wasn't adequate, and there were wells going dry, shallow wells going dry. There were uh, uh, water trucks delivering water to people in the city, different places, and people would get up in the middle of the night and go down and wait for a water truck to come by to fill their containers. Sometimes, uh, you know, taxi drivers told me sometimes the water truck would show up, sometimes it wouldn't. Um, so that was an issue. I didn't have any problem getting water but uh, many people did. Now here again, about four years later, there's an El Nino type system uh, affecting weather around the world. And uh, it's affecting us, giving us uh, drier. And this has been the driest by far of any drought I've experienced. And uh, I can tell you it's been over two months. I think once or twice we had just a little bit of rain during these last two plus months, but mostly absolutely no rain and uh, farmers the crops uh, they aren't planting a lot of them or they're drying up if they have planted uh, around the Philippines and so it it is more severe and yet I have not heard of I think there are some mountain areas where they're delivering water to uh, but I haven't heard about the long lines uh, and, and people waiting for water trucks showing up in most places at this point in time, over on Bohol, I heard there are certain areas on Bohol Island, maybe perhaps other islands. And I've done a little bit of research, and I'm going to show you just a couple of headlines about that research. Um, you know, there's no such thing as normal weather. There are, there are uh, patterns. Uh, sometimes you can predict them, sometimes you can't. Some of the research I read said that every three to seven years, there's an El Nino, followed by a, a neutral type weather system uh, and then followed by a La Nina and it, it affects the how warm the ocean waters are basically which affects a lot of your weather on land as well. Here's a book I came across on Amazon.com uh, Extraordinary Drought in the Philippines October 1911 to May 2012 very extreme drought for that long. Here's another article uh, report. Uh, the 2007 dry spell in Luzon. Its causes, impact, and response measures. And I remember growing up um, on a farm in Minnesota, USA, north central USA, uh, a couple times in the, gosh, I think, um, 
I don't know, 19, late, later 19, 1950s and 1960s drought periods. And I was out, out looking at the crops and, and uh, you know, this poor corn and beans and alfalfa. Hay crops uh, just withering in the hot sun and not getting, uh, not getting the proper rain. And I was thinking, isn't there some way we can, we can irrigate this? We can bring water to the plants. In the end, I don't know all the details. I think the farmers weren't quite so worried because back there, even back then, I think there was pretty good crop insurance. And uh, without having to spend fuel for your tractors and uh, fixing broken parts, uh, the government would pay you some kind of insurance. They'd come out and determine how, what kind of loss you got and you'd get a check from the government. Just for your reference, uh, that building right in the center, um, that is Sun Vida, it, it's kind of blurred out by the rain. Uh, there's a taller building behind that, uh, the Sun Vida condominiums right across the street from SM Seaside Mall, which is down there on the kind of in the center, going longitudinally. And the a little bit taller building behind that is, I think, the Grand. It, it's called the multi-use hotel, and it is not open yet. It had some damage a couple of years ago from Typhoon Odette, and that's still under construction. The taller buildings off to the left uh, kind of looks like fog, but it's really rain. That is part of. Uh, um, Mandani Bay. I think there's like 12 different buildings going up there. Condominium buildings, hotels, a couple hotels, I think, commercial buildings uh, along the uh, Mactan uh, Strait, the channel between Cebu Island and Mactan Island. And the condos kind of center left, a little bit shorter. They're the Persimmon uh, condominiums. I lived there for a number of months, uh, several years ago. Nice uh, lap pool they have there. For those of you who did not see my last video a uh, month or so ago on weather, I'll include a couple of graphs here, one on temperature, one on uh, rainfall. And uh, you've got your, your months down at the bottom, January through December. And I've, I've pulled in here um, Manila, Davao, Cebu City and Dumaguete. So you can see that your average high and low temperatures, they don't change very much uh, throughout the months. And uh, these are degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so you can convert those to Celsius if you would like. But anyway, they don't, they don't change much. Uh, May is generally the hottest month. Manila being the, the huge, uh, huge heat island of a city it is, is a little bit hotter. And here's a graph of average monthly rainfall. Now the problem with these graphs and uh, the data that they put out is that that takes into account the drought year. You know, if you would if you would subtract the drought year out of there, the graph would be quite a bit different. Uh, or you could just graph the drought years. Um, but there's no mention about the drought year being combined in the average of the monthly totals. Um, so every year, like I said, nothing is normal. Every year is a little bit different and uh, depends upon what part of the Philippines you live in as well as far as the rainfall. And you can also get information about uh, average typhoons, average tropical storms that enter the Philippines area of responsibility, not necessarily make landfall. Uh, every year, but they're again an average. Uh, this year is particularly low. I think it's even under 10, where they say the average is around 19 to 20 per year. Uh, named storms uh, that, that come into the Philippine area of responsibility. Um, so there again, nothing is normal. You take all the averages but when you factor in El Nino's, La Nina's, uh, other effects, uh, changes things up quite a bit. Most of the typhoons, the storms, tropical storms, uh, they come in from the Pacific and they, uh, they, gather, they gather strength as they hit the very warm waters of the Philippine Sea. And uh, in fact, we have one uh, possibly forming right now 
I think it's going to become a named storm, possibly even uh, later today if it hasn't already. And uh, it will brush up against the Philippines, is what the projections are, the models, and uh, will bring much needed rain to several parts of the Philippines. Uh, but they don't always follow the models that the humans put out there, and they, uh, you know, they have their own mind. The, the various forces, high pressure, low pressures, uh, mountains and seas, generally the outer islands, outer eastern islands, take the brunt of any of these storms. And uh, here in Cebu City, Cebu Island, we usually don't get, get too much of the brunt of that energy. Uh, but uh, a little over two years ago, we had Typhoon Odette came across very, very strong, did lots of damage across uh, the eastern and central Visayas in particular, including Cebu Island and, and Mole Bull and uh, Bohol and Samar Leyte, even down a part of Mindanao, uh, wiped out big, big areas down there. And 2013, uh, Haiyan, also called Yolanda here in, in the Philippines, uh, did some major damage. Uh, snuck through and re retained its strength. Uh, they, they felt the force of the storm here in Cebu City, people I've talked to. But uh, most of it was in the, the north third of Cebu where they had most of the damage, especially to crops up there. And you don't need a, a typhoon or named storm to have major, major rainstorms that do a lot of flooding and create create a lot of damage so as you're thinking about where to settle in uh, do your research be aware whether that area is prone to flooding very important uh, how about water availability clean water availability uh, is that pretty secure so we're in the El Nino which is giving us drought conditions but there's already talk and the projections uh, forecast for this to in the, the coming month or two for it to turn in back into a La Nina and uh, we may be getting too much rain again a little more rain than necessary and that's one of the issues one of the reasons that the Philippines I think is still the top rice importer in the world they, they import rice from uh, Vietnam from Thailand India perhaps some other places as well. Uh, but uh, one of the issues, too much water, not enough water, not, uh, not set up to properly irrigate and, and manage the land, much of the land that they have. The weather apps that uh, I generally use, uh, number one, I mentioned a number of times, windy.com, very, very excellent uh, to use all over the world. Uh, for free and they've got apps for uh, Apple and Android phones uh, for your computer of course they're online as well a lot of a lot of uh, just a ton of information for free amazing that it's all for free and um, I've, I've tried a number of other apps you know we've got mountains and oceans and currents and a lot of things affecting weather here so I haven't found any that are, are absolutely perfect or anywhere close to that but you know they're getting they're getting better and, and the apps I've looked at kind of project that over the next several days we will probably have some cloudy skies possibility anyway from 40 50 60 percent chance of rains so hopefully we will uh, continue to get some some rain not all at once we don't want the major flooding but uh, hopefully we'll get quite a few more millimeters, centimeters, and inches of rain over the coming weeks. This all-day cloud and rain situation is uh, really unique in my experience in over eight years here in the Philippines. Uh, my experience has been that rain comes, it rains 20, 30, 40 minutes, then it stops. It might rain once or twice a day during the rainy season, but it, it, in between, uh, you know, there, it's not raining, you go about your business. And so this all day cloud and rain is really unusual. It's happened a few times uh, each year, but uh, not very much now. Didn't get any, any lightning or thunder with this storm. 
system. And there have been years, I think the first or second year I was here, a lot of lightning, a lot of thunder. The next year, hardly any lightning or thunder. So a lot of things, a lot of, a lot of complicated things when you're talking about weather and forecasting. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.